I'm Andrew Walsh, head brewer for Lake of Bays Brewing Company. So tell us about the beer you made with Nova Lager. So, we made a cold IPA. It's uh, the new trendy style that's coming up in the market. And we thought it'd be an interesting way to kind of test out some of the, uh, the limits or, or uh, I guess, boundaries of what Nova Lager could do. So we decided to use the cold IPA. We wanted to push the boundaries a little bit on what lager yeast sort of are traditionally used for. And we thought something with a big dry hop, we wanted to see haze level. We wanted to sort of see what it could do with sort of asking a lot of it. So for really a big dry hop, um, there is a nice clarity to it, but you're getting all that aroma that we were looking for. It doesn't have that, say, big dry hop ale character to it. It has that nice, lager feel, which I think is sort of the goal of the cold IPAs at this point. Take a style that exists and then move it in a slightly different direction. So tell us how the fermentation went. Fermentation was uh, was interesting. We actually pitched it on a Friday and uh, we didn't go check on it for a couple days and we had a power outage and it kicked off our glycol chiller and this spiked up to 23 degrees, which is Usually a death sentence for loggers. Uh, we were uh, kind of talking about like, you know, this isn't gonna work. This, this probably isn't gonna turn out. And we were surprised. Uh, it, it turned out clean. There was no real off character to it. And uh, we, we did have luckily a second brick and we were already planning the brew for next week as we were trying to get it in for, for this project. But this beer turned out great. I'm really happy with the results, so. And yeah, the temperature range is like recommended up to 20, which is crazy for a, for a lager. This is a special hybrid, but um, with, you know, going up to 23, what, what were you feeling and thinking in that moment when you saw that it was? I was thinking that I had another day of work ahead of me is what I thought. I thought, to be honest, we were gonna have to reschedule, work our, work our brewers around and, and make this again. And again, pleasant, pleasantly surprised by sort of the resilience of the strain. I don't know if our house lager would have held up as well, um, which is a, you know, that's a big vote of confidence for us. We we do a good blend of ales and lagers uh, at Lake of Bays. And so to have something sort of in your back pocket that maybe that works out where um, it's it's clean, but has a better range of temperature control. I mean, that's that's a that's a big ask and, and, and really a big benefit for brewers. Andrew, what would you say are some of the main challenges you have when you're brewing lagers? Temperature control is always uh, such a tricky part with lagers. Obviously, you, you want that nice low temperature. And as a brewery that has a few mainstay summer lagers, we're in cottage country, we need those sorts of beers. Um, just stressing out glycol systems and longer tank time and all that really adds to, I know a lot of breweries have to make decisions of whether they're going to make lagers or not. And I think that that stinks because there's there's a whole like almost half market of lagers that aren't being brewed because of either tank rotation issues or temperature issues or whatnot. So, you know, that's what everybody deals with, but it's, it's again, nice to have uh, a lager yeast that maybe is allowing us to push some of those limits and still be within a, a well-controlled environment of what loggers have to be. How does Lal Brew Nova Lager compare to any of the other lager strains that you've used? So we've been uh, pretty steady with one lager strain and um, this was a really nice trial. I think it's, I think it's something within the industry where everybody was like, I gotta find the next new hops. And what you start realizing is, is that yeast and malt, uh, really haven't been given as much time to shine. And so, you know, kind of, I think this is a really cool way that this opens up the yeast category of what lagers are. And it's not just sulfur forward, or it's not just, you know, the, those traditional notes. We're actually intending to do some more side by side with this because of how happy we've been with the strain. So yeah, we're kind of interested to see, we only really have this one data point, um, but we're excited to try to, do some side-by-sides and, and see how it reacts with some of our other standard operating kind of brew sheets with our traditional loggers and see what that changes. And I think we're gonna find it's gonna take some characters away, but maybe accentuate some others and see where we kind of go from there. And I think even we did 
a very pale beer. I'd be very interested to see how that goes in like darker lagers, um, what that brings forward. Does that allow the malt to really shine forward? I'm already sort of just spitballing here of like, maybe because of how clean that is, maybe I don't have to overuse some of our caramel malts to sort of blend in with that typical lager strain. And does that create Oh, and our old head brewer, Dan, would be so happy. Some clean but dark lagers where you have that balance of like just crushable but also flavorful lagers. And with the, yeah, comparing it to traditional lagers, I think it's just cool to have more tools in the toolbox. There's been so little genetic diversity in lager strains compared to ales for hundreds of years. And now, uh, now we're opening things up and uh, can do new things with lagers with Nova Lager. Um, and yeah, the, the SO2 can still be there in really small amounts. The H2S, which is more of an off flavor, is just absent, which is, yeah. which is nice. And that can really cut down on maturation time too. So. I, I think I keep talking about lager strains almost a, a bit kind of, I'm a little ignorant when it comes to lagers because I've just been so single track on what lagers have been for my brewing experience, Lake of Bays in general is like, this is what we've gone with. So it's, you kind of know something for well. I've been I've been with Lake Base for ten years. Like I know what I know what our lager strain tastes like. I know exactly what that is, and I know exactly how to build recipes around that to make variants of lagers, but always bring it back to like this is what will work well. So now my mind's racing of like hold on, I've got to now I've got to rethink the way that I've made these, and that's just exciting for me as sort of product development uh, to to know like okay back to the drawing board, back to what you thought you knew and like let's let's start all over and 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 run all these different trials. I think for so long that pressure has been put on hops. In terms of when you're developing a recipe, there's kind of been a standard malt bill, there's been a standard yeast that you use and a lot of your creativity is allowed to come from or has been allowed in the past to come from, you know, the hops that you're choosing to put in there. So it's interesting now we seem to be going through almost a renaissance looking back at all the ingredients and how they work together um, but also looking at yeasts and and how they really are the driving factor in a lot of the the taste profiles that are coming through in, in beers we're i mean we're so guilty of that because if you look on our can we're like here are the exact hops we use and then we tell you here are the exact hops we use in the dry hop if they're any different like we we're we're so we're so driven to be like, look, look at the cool hops we're using. Yeast is, I, I think, a footnote on just like the, the uh, required ingredients right. by the LC of like, right. there's yeast in there. And like, and then you just forget about it. But I would love to see that sort of information on like, oh, that like, I've had beers with Nova and I remember it having a character around this. And I think, and the way that I build beers is that I taste other beers and then think like, oh, I'd be really interested in a spin that way. To know the strains, to know what you're getting into and seeing its strengths, I think that's gonna be something that, um, you know, maybe it's gonna take a little bit longer, but if we can get to a state there where it's not, we're not just glorifying those top three hops where every hazy has the same three, then it'll be pretty interesting. I think we're gonna see some cool development. So Nova Lager is uh, one of the only commercial strains out there, if not the only, that has a significant amount of beta-glucosidase activity. Uh, brewing a cold IPA, uh, a more hop-forward beer, out of all the trials that we've done, I think this is the most hop-forward uh, uh, beer in, in trials that we've done in Canada. Um, how would you say the yeast played with the hops? I was a little hesitant with cold IPAs. Uh, I think that it's been sort of a, a mishmash of people are now coming out with a new way to call a dry hop lager a dry hop lager. Now I know that there are differences and I, and I get that, but I, the dry hop lager trials we did before, I was always like, I just don't think that the lager strain really works very well with dry hops and, and hops in general. It always felt very muddied and very like mishmashed. And I think what I'm sort of taking away from this is that it's a specific lager strain or a log traditional lager character that doesn't play well with hops. This played wonderfully. It's, it's clean enough where you're able to get that profile um, of hops that you're looking for in a big dry hop beer without it just sort of being like, oh, it's this and this and they smashed them together. So I, I think 
I think it worked really, really well and we were a little skeptical, but we knew that we wanted to make this style and, and felt like we're gonna have to figure it out and this worked out really, really well. Apart from your, um, it sounds like you are interested in running uh, side-by-sides with some existing recipes so that you can have like a direct um, comparison. What else would you be interested in brewing with this kind of outside of that? What would be your, if you were given unlimited Nova Lager, what would be like your next? Is that part of the event? deal? <laughs> Is that the contract? It's on tape now. It's a good question. I think we've sort of had our head wrapped around this, uh, the cold IPA, and then uh, reworking our, well, not reworking, but trialing our Italian Pilsner. Um, because it's, again, that's another dry hop lager that we felt like, wow, if this can work well with the dry hop, um, then maybe we should implement that into seeing what the benefits are. Would you recommend Nova Lager to other brewers? 100%. Um, we intend to use it um, in a few more trials, so I, I if I'm gonna use it in more than one, that typically means I'm at least intrigued by it. And I, I think I'm a little bit further down the road. I think this is gonna be something where, you know, does it hit our core brands? I don't know that that takes a lot more planning, but it's certainly got its foot in the door of something that we wanna be using and, and figuring out the best way to apply it to beers that we do down the road. So we're striking a deal that's going to be used in all your core brands. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we're doing. And now we're doing we're doing a four Unli pack. We have the unlimited. So I mean, if I have unlimited supply, how is it not going in our cores?